proof to consider n possible positions for the n objects okay so they are there are identical objects i am not going to relabel them or anything right so out of the uh, n positions i choose n1 positions to put the type 1 object okay the type 1 object can appear they are all identical right so no matter i don't want to look at the order so i want to just form a subset right say that okay these are the guys who are going to appear and where are they going to appear in the n1 positions wherever positions and i am going to take so i choose the n1 positions and say that okay i just put all the uh, copies of this object in this particular position so how many ways i can choose the n1 positions there are n positions available n choose n1 ways i can choose the n1 positions right so i fix the n1 positions for the first object in n choose n1 ways so i selected this that positions are not available anymore right so once i have removed this n1 positions and put the uh, type 1 object there i look at the remaining n minus n1 positions and out of this i choose n2 other positions right this n2 positions i will put the type 2 object they are identical i don't care which order i just put them there so continue this way i choose n minus n1 minus n2 minus etc nk minus 1 choose nk ways i can choose the nk type object right? nk position for the last uh, object right so each object i choose now these choices are independent because you know the the position that we are selecting were all distinct right so i selected the first n1 the number of choices were independent right because first n1 i i select now i remove this and then from the remaining n minus n now i am choosing n2 position so therefore that choice the number of the choice is only depending on how many are remaining which is n minus n1 right so that n2 positions choice is uh, the same always and they are independent so therefore i can multiply right i can i can first fix this guy and then multiply this then i can multiply this etc now this product is precisely finding the number of ways to arrange the uh, terms right the the in the multi set i am going to arrange the linear arrangements of the objects and that is i can obtain in this way so therefore this thing must be equal to what we were counting right so this uh, is going to be equal to n factorial by n, n1 factorial by theta nk factorial so show this equality you can use algebra right if you want algebraic method combinatorially there is nothing to say right they are equal because the combinatorial proof is clear because we just did the same thing right we selected or, or we just basically counted the same object right we counted the number of possible uh, uh, ways to uh, form words or like you know to arrange uh, objects where the, there were n1 objects of a uh, type n2 objects of another type etc and k objects of another type and that we found to be uh, this in uh, one counting and we found it to be uh, this in another county and therefore these two things must be equal so there is a notation for this which is n choose n1 comma n2 comma etc comma nk okay this is called the multinomial coefficient I, as i told you earlier so the notation for multinomial coefficient is n choose n1 n2 etc nk and that is equal to n factorial by n1 factorial etc nk factorial and i want you to show this as a homework why this product must be equal to this factor right n factorial this is a closed form this is a product so uh, uh, find it out okay and it's very easy ha huh, one example okay so any theory we look at we look at at least some examples so consider uh, an 8 cross 8 chess board in which we place eight rooks so that they cannot attack each other so how many possible ways are there to keep the rooks so that they cannot attack each other so 
so if you if you uh, are not familiar with uh, chess and rooks i will uh, tell you uh, how the rook moves at least and attacks <coughs> and uh, the as as a you know addendum to the question i can ask okay suppose the rooks are not the same color okay we will first assume that all the rooks are identical the same color but then we can say that okay suppose one rook is blue color two are white color two is red and three are yellow then how many ways you can do this will the number increases or decrease whatever right so <clears throat> uh, so here is our uh, chess board okay so chess board is usually labeled with the uh, you know the ranks of the chess board it's called ranks uh, called a b c d e f g h are the ranks so the person uh, will uh, sit you know the the person with the white uh, pieces will look so here i am looking color and uh, giving color and all but don't worry about that uh, we'll sit here with this will be a white corner and this will be a white corner in the chessboard and then uh, this a b c d e f g h will be written here where the person with the white color uh, sits and here the opposite side the person with the black color sits and these are called ranks okay so the you know when the pawn or something moves so it this uh, which row it is it's called the rank Okay, one, two, three, four, etc., up to eight. And uh, so these are called files, and these are ranks. Okay. So <clears throat> now, so there are these objects called rooks, which can move in the following way. Okay. A rook can move in either in its uh, in its rank uh, or along its file. Okay. At at one movement, it can just move in one direction. Okay. So you can move either this way or uh, it can move this way wherever it is sitting so this guy for example can move either this way or this way or it can move here or it can move here okay <coughs> so yeah <coughs> sorry so first uh, you know discard this color that i have given to the rooks okay the color was for the second part of the question i don't want to do two <laughs> times this so uh, i gave a uh, color but assume that all of them are of the same color for the time now we have this eight rooks now when two rooks are in the same rank or the same file they can attack each other okay because you know one can reach the other guy going in that direction so therefore if they are in the same rank they can attack each other if they are in the same file then also they can attack each other so i don't want the rooks to be attacking so if i have a rook in this position then i cannot put any rook here anywhere here or anywhere here <coughs> similarly so you know then i can put the rook in maybe here if you want for example right but then uh, again if i put one here or here whatever then in this rank it cannot have right and this file it cannot have anything so this way i want to put eight rooks so that they don't attack each other so i want to count the number of ways i can do this right so how do you count this okay again think about this try to find your own counting and then see whether the answer matches with what we do so spend some time and then if you are back we continue okay so <clears throat> what first we observe that because if i look at the the ranks let's say a b c or the files a b c d etc uh, h each file can contain at most one rook right each file can contain at most one rook right now <clears throat> therefore uh, i i uh, number the you know things as follows okay a comma j1 right the first rook wherever it is appearing in the first uh, uh, file the the a file in the j1th position okay in the b file it can appear in the j2th position maybe and in the h file it can appear in the j uh, eight position okay so i know that any of the eight rooks must appear in eight of these different uh file so there is no choice in that right they must appear in eight different files they cannot appear in the same file two of them cannot appear in the same file now once i choose 
eight, you know, eight, you know, this, uh, these are the eight files I, you know, I have. So once I choose the eight rooks, I have to decide what are going to be my J1, J2, etc. J8. Now J1, J2, etc. Can I have A, J1 and, uh, you know, B, J2, where J1 is equal to J2? If J1 is equal to J2, both of these rooks are going to be in different uh, rank, uh, files, but they are in the same rank, right? But they cannot be in the same rank. So J1 and J2 must be different. So I have J1 to J8, and out of this J1 to A8, it can be any distinct 8 numbers from 1 to 8, right? It must be the distinct numbers from 1 to 8. But that can appear in any order, right? Any order I can have. For example, in the EA file, if I have the first position, then B file, I cannot have the first position, but I can take the fourth position, right? For example, C file, I can take the second position, etc. H file, I can take the sixth position. So this is possible. Right? So therefore, all I have the choice is the choice of the eight factorial permutations for the uh, ranks. So any of the, any which rank I am going to appear in the J1, J2, etc., J8 position is possible to choose. So therefore, eight factorial choices are there. So we have exactly eight factorial ways to uh, 8 factorial ways to arrange the rooks. <coughs> if all the rooks have the same color. Now what happens if they have different colors? Now suppose all of them have uh, Uh, all of them have uh, the same color. We said that there are eight factorial possibilities. We want to find out what if some of them have, like, you know, uh, you know, one rook is blue, two is white, two is red, and three is yellow. Then what do you do? It turns out that it is uh, easier if you look at another question and solve it first. Okay? Suppose all the eight colors were different. Then you know how to count it, right? Because we have eight factorial ways to arrange them. But now I can color the rooks in eight factorial different possible ways, right? Eight, because there are eight colors appearing, right? So I have eight factorial ways to choose the rooks, and then I have eight factorial ways to color them. Therefore, eight factorial into eight factorial possibilities to uh, distribute eight different colored rooks on eight different uh, positions here in the chessboard without them attacking. Now, since, you know, I know that not all of them are of the same color, now I will use the multinomial coefficients, right, and the idea from there, because I can say that, okay, all these eight comes from these things, right? There is one object of color blue, you know, the blue object, blue colored rook, there is one exactly, n1 is 1, then n2 is 2, n3 is 2, and n4 is 3. So 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 1, which is 8. So I have the 8 rooks, but 1, 2, 2, and 3 are appearing. But they, you know, one object is of the same type, so 1 factorial, 2 objects of the same type, 2 objects of another type, and 3 objects of another type. So therefore, I can multiply, I have a divide by, 1 factorial into 2 factorial into 2 factorial into 3 factorial. And this will be my answer for the number of rooks, <coughs> number of ways to keep the rooks, uh, where the colors are like 1 blue, 2 uh, red, 2 yellow, and uh, 3 green, whatever. Right? So that is the idea. So, <coughs> time for homework. Okay? So here are uh, some of the homeworks. So we have a deck of 52 cards. I hope that all of you are familiar with playing cards. But if not, uh, uh, a, a deck contains uh, four suits, uh, which is uh, red colored hertz okay, with the hertz symbol, 13 of them. Then 13 uh, diamonds, which are also red colored, 13 clubs, and uh, 13 spades, and they are black. Now, uh, of course, a suit. Uh, uh, heard for example the 13 cards will have the labels like uh, ace a two three four five etc ten and jack j 
queen q and king k okay so these are the 13 uh, labels for the uh, suits so each one has all these numbers now suppose if if all cards of the same suit must be kept together so we can shuffle the cards so you know the 52 cards we shuffle them but we can shuffle them but we have to make sure that all cards of the same suits must be kept together so then how many orderings are possible how many distinct orderings are possible for the cards you put in one stack but then we are order them in different ways how many different ways we can do this <clears throat> so this is your first homework then uh, next question is that count the number of devices of the numbers that we already saw some example like this 10 raised to 10 second is 740 and third is 25 into 31 raised to 4 into 7 raised to 6 third question uh, how many integers larger than uh, let's say 10,000 uh, 10, have distinct digits and does not contain the digit 5 or 3 <coughs> sorry fourth question is that how many ways to select five boys and five girls and to keep them alternately around a round table sit them now they want to seat them uh, so so you want to seat five girls and five boys and there are 10 seats maybe and then uh, in this uh, around the round table you want to but we want them to be sitting alternately so how many different ways you can do that so many of these uh, questions you might need to use several of the principles that we have learned okay you can do all of them with the principles that we have learned but you might have to use a combination of them fifth question a multi set can contain more than one occurrence of uh, some elements right we already saw multi set but you know let us say that uh, uh, the multi set contains a a a b b b 1 2 3 4 Okay. So A is appearing three times. I, I denote the multi set in the following way. If three is appearing, uh, A is appearing three times, I write three dot A to say that A is appearing three times. Okay. B is appearing three times, I will write three dot three dot B. And then uh, one, two, three, four is appearing only one, so I will not write anything. Just the numbers. So <clears throat> so this set is representing precisely this set. Okay. Just for later references, we might use this notation. So how many three element subsets it has? Okay, three element sub multi sets it has. Okay, I allow multi sets, but it must be subset of this. I cannot allow more than let's say, uh, you know, uh, more than three B for example in any sub uh, multi subset, or I cannot allow more than one two for example, right? Because two is pairing only once in the multi set. So subset also sub multi set also can contain only one copy of two. <coughs> Okay, then 20 people uh, stand in a queue in front of a counter to buy, uh, let's say, a new book that is published by, let's say, Harry Potter. Sometime back it happened, maybe, right? So, so a new book is published, whatever uh, some famous author has published. So, when, you know, the book is released, people go stand in uh, queue, you know, at the time of the release, they will stand in queue to buy the books. So, let's say that 20 people stand in a queue in front of a counter to buy a new book price of the book is let us say 100 rupees okay so each book has price 100 rupees there is only one book for sale now on the opening time the sales counter you know they usually you know this is what you know, most of the time in shops right or like if you go to bus for example right uh, you enter a bus bus conductor in the morning first trip has no money with him nothing zero cash if you don't have a change, you are in trouble. You have to wait for the change. So similarly, the sales counter opens with no cash. So if exactly 10 people have, let's say, 100 rupees note with them, and the others have exactly 200 rupee notes with them, okay, they come with 200 rupee notes. 10 of them come with 100 rupee notes. Now, we don't know which guys have 100 rupee notes and which guys have 200, but we know that 10 of them has 100 rupees and 10 of them has 200 rupees now what is the probability that you know so the queue is arbitrary right people will come and stand there some of them have uh, 100 and some of them have 200 what is the probability that no one has to wait for change right right if somebody uh, <coughs> gave a, a 200 
and then uh, you know the the clerk does not have a change cashier does not have change he will say that okay wait there uh, till i get the next guy or somebody who has a hundred rupee when he buys i will give you the change so what is the probability that no one has to wait for change okay so find it though it's going to be interesting and uh, seven question the sequence uh, you know we have you know in calculus we have already seen the sequence n by n plus 1 whole raised to n okay n greater than or equal to 1 uh, is monotone decreasing and converges to 1 by e from basic calculus course that we have studied okay now prove that n factorial is greater than n by r whole raised to n for every n greater than or equal to 1 and r greater than r strictly greater than e okay so e is the base of the natural logarithms <coughs> the next question find a closed form expression for uh, the given uh, expression summation k is equal to 0 to n n choose k 3 raised to k okay and then uh, next one is that summation k is equal to 1 to n k by n raised to k times n choose k so find closed form expression for these uh, both of these using uh, some of the uh, techniques that we have learned <coughs> 